Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Weekend Winners in association with Bet Victor. And after the Grand National at Aintree last weekend, we have another Grand National to bring you on this week's show because we head to air then for the Scottish Grand National. We're also going to be previewing the best of the action otherwise at air and of course at Newbury as well. So something for everyone. And again, we're going to have more Bet Boost for you towards the end of the show with our naps. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Now I'm being joined as ever, but at the Skype had this time by both deck and sam lads we've been reunited sam you survived aintree more importantly i did and i think you stayed the trip in pop world better than me oh, that's uh, all we're saying that debatable <laughs> found a 50 obviously a good result for us last week on the show fingers crossed we can find a few more winners yeah hopefully so like i said that was a nice nap that we just got over the line then at aintree and deck of course we had the grand national it was a fantastic spectacle to see though wasn't it yeah no it was um a good result in terms of everyone coming home safe and sound uh, from the national so yeah look that that's uh, obviously a big positive with the way things are going but we're in limbo at the moment aren't we we don't know if we're doing the flat we don't know if we're doing the jump so this week show sure, we're going to mix a bit of both yeah we're going to have a real blend then of action in this one and of course so much to look forward to but before we get stuck into the action a reminder as ever to please do gamble responsibly our tips are not guaranteed to win but we will still do our best to point you in the right direction right we're going to begin at Newbury though with the by duty free stakes, of course, otherwise known as the Fred Darling. The group three, four three year olds over seven furlongs here. Right now, a bit of interest in the betting, the way that it's gone. Relief Rally has been deposed as favourite for Regal Jubilee here, Deck. So, how did you see it? Yeah, just the six runners to go to post. Um, three year old fillies as well, unexposed coming off the back of a, a wet winter and a miserable spring. So uh, maybe some of these girls won't be flying on Saturday, but we shall see. Um, don't see an awful lot of pace in the race, which I hope is going to suit my selection, which is star music. Now, there's going to be a lot of chat at this time of year about horses training on from two to three. Um, I'll be amazed if she's not just as good or even better as a three-year-old, given the size of her. But I think she'll go well. She had a four-run campaign last year for Richard Hughes. She was just far too green in her first couple of starts including this race here at Newbury uh, you can see the size of her there she's a big old girl and she actually kind of we, we lose her in picture here for a moment she comes back in in screen the penny really dropped late and that's been the key with her uh, is her first two starts two green but a change of tactics at Kempton on the third start where she made all the running really seemed to light the fire in her and then she finished her season with a career best at Newmarket behind one of the leading contenders in the 1000 guineas in the also sharp stakes um, I think the combination of her being a bit better this year staying seven furlongs and being a good horse mentally with Richard Hughes's team in good order, I think she's well overpriced at 15 to 2. Yeah, like I say, the yard. I mean, there's not really a yard in much better form at present, is it, than the mm. start of a season than the Richard Hughes yard at present and 15 to 2 then about one of his runners in at star. Magic for deck, Sam. Who did you like? Yeah, well, as you mentioned at the top, Relief Rally was the initial favourite and I was really keen to take her on. For me, I think this time of year, we're always looking at horses that are going to go from younger to older. And I kind of don't fancy her to do that. Connections have obviously changed. They've cashed in on, on the option of moving her on. And last year, when you went back through some of the quotes, it was very much, you know, this year's horse. And I thought, let's take a look at horses that could potentially take another step forward. And that's why I came down on the favourite now, Regal Jubilee. I really like this horse. Uh, the two wins last year, I think we're going to look at the Windsor clip here. And um, just the manner of this one was very impressive. There's not a great deal of substance to the form, but just watch how the horse just kicks clear sort of towards that key part of the race at Windsor when you can take a lead and just really go on. Um, I just think there's a lot of versatility of the horse, having one on heavy and on good ground, which means I don't need to worry about the ground conditions, which again we're going to mention because at the moment it's suggesting that we're going to end up, I'm working on good to soft, but we can have anything potentially this time of year. Um, really nice prospect, definitely think the type that will kick forward once again. Yeah, this was really impressive, wasn't it? So I'm not surprised whatsoever that she's now gone favourite and overtaken Relief Rally because Relief Rally, God love her. She was so hardy last year, so, so mm. likeable. Now, of course, she's sporting her new ownership colours previously in the double green of Simon Muneer and Isaac Swade as well. But all the talk last season was that she was very much a here and now two-year-old. Would she be able to go on from that? I don't know if she's going to stay the seven furlongs. So I'm not surprised that Regal Jubilee is now heading the way. But also, 
about Regal Jubilee. I mean, that listed race she won last time, did it lack depth somewhat, though, for her? And I know that many just didn't cope with conditions. Mm. She's proven versatile in terms of how she can cope with conditions, but perhaps it did help her being ridden in rear. So I'm pleased that we showed that shot, though, for her, because that was probably... Uh, well, it showed her ability, though, more so than anything else on that occasion, didn't it? But for me, though, I have to side with El Malka here, who's an 11-2 to two shot in this one. Now, watch this, because this was fascinating. Her sole start so far, this was her debut start on the 24th of November at Southwell. Now, she is over in the yellow colours, further back with the lapels on her. Now, she dives off to her left at this point. The penny is dropping for her throughout, and at no stage in this race did she really look the winner. So for her to still overcome that and to go on in, in the manner that she did was super, super likeable here. So I just thought this showed an immense amount of ability. Now, hopefully she'll get further than seven furlongs on this basis, and you look at her pedigree as well. She'll have no issue whatsoever translating that to turf, a daughter of King and, and, uh, and out of that really smart mare, of course, in the same colours as well. So, El Malka is going to be the one for me at 11 to 2. And just for hope that the few at the top of the market fail to so fire. We've, so, we've got six runners and mm. we've chosen three different ones. Oh, we've three. nailed this opener, well, lads. If one of those don't win, we're in trouble. And we, we put the boot into Relief Rally. <laughs> exactly. Poor Relief Rally's going to absolutely dot up now, yeah. isn't she? Exactly. But it's going to be a Malka for me, Deck. Uh, it's going to be the overpriced star music for me. And Sam? Regal Jubilee will Rain victorious. Oh, nicely done. OK, then three different selections in our opener. Do let us know who you fancy in the comments section below. Now, before we move on to our next race, if you're enjoying the show and hopefully you are, do remember to like and subscribe to the At The Races YouTube channel and also hit the bell notification so you never miss an episode as we move on to the Greenham Stakes for Group 3 for the three-year-olds over seven furlongs. So now we've got the turn of the Colts in here. The unbeaten Zoom Zoom heads the way at 11 to 8, 13 to bar about the remainder, Sam. So each way possibilities in here. Yeah, uh, Zoom Zoom, worthy favourite, probably. Uh, my concerns would be the drying ground. Seen on the poly track and then two wins on heavy. Definitely got the form to stack up, but I would just have a little bit of a concern around that going. And at the price of, what, 11 to 8, I want to take this horse on. And I actually plumped for Mr Sketch, which is, in theory, the second string of the Wafnan runners, but... I think this is a really, really nice horse in the making. Very interesting to get the comments from the trainer that this horse is very much a big horse at two and kind of needed to have that kind of season of experience. A um, couple of seconds at Newbury, we're watching the most recent of those which came towards the end of the season in that group two. And this is an interesting race. It does end up in a bit of a blanket finish, but I thought it really showed good sort of tenacity and hardiness to end up second in this race. And I think it'd be interesting to see how that works out. Um, William Buick, Book to ride. Obviously, James Doyle for so long has had to play second string. He had first pick, I assume, as the retained rider. Um, he's gone for one that's slightly shorter in the betting. For me, I think this horse is probably a longer term prospect, but again, I'm looking for horses that are going to improve going that little bit older in age. And I just really think. He's a type to keep on side and a double figure price. That's an each way play for oh, me. Oh, how the tables have turned. It's usually William yeah. Buick getting the first pick over James yeah. Doyle. Yeah, He's exactly. playing second fiddle this time. I know, it's quite a nice bit of, uh, yeah, a bit of synergy there, isn't it really? But Mr. Sketch, a 10 to 1 shot then. And like, say, the size of him, you would expect him to improve now. As a three-year-old, Deck, who did you like? Yeah, obviously a bigger feel for the, the Greenham um, and, uh, and a race, I think, in terms of pace is going to set up differently as well. There, there's plenty of pace on here. So uh, while the Fred Darling potentially the look of a tactical race I think the best horse should win here uh, look there it's, it's seriously competitive but I, I can't have zoom zoom at 11 to 8 I really can't um, look I'm not saying he cannot win because that's always a stupid thing to say <laughs> in this game but I just have no interest in backing him at, at 11 to 8 um, I, look he could be a horse that I got totally wrong and he is a big old boy I think he's going to be better again uh, this season and he's obviously trained by a brilliant trainer Rafe Beckett but in my opinion, he makes the market for a good bet. And I'm going to side with, with room service for the Kevin Reinhardt. Now, he had a four-race uh, juvenile career last season. And in his first two or three races, he was just so, so green off the bridle, uh, especially over five furlongs and or uh, on fast ground. But this day in the sales race at Doncaster at the St. Ledger meeting, he went up to an extended six and a half furlongs. Um, he also got some soft ground to run at. And just the way this race developed, 
that clip started with him out on the wing. That's never a good, uh, uh, a good thing for a juvenile. But look, he ends up halfway across the track and he still manages to win. And he's won really, really nicely. Now, I think even um, a negative view on that form would suggest that he's got some of the strongest form in the book in this race. There's clearly a little bit of a kink to him but given the way he hung across the track. But who doesn't love a, love a horse or a person with a little bit of kink in him? <laughs> he will do for me. He is overpriced at 12 to 1. And the other thing with him, Kevin Ryan is another trainer who's got his string mm. in good order at the moment. He had a good uh, winner at New Markets Craven meeting on Thursday. Uh, this lad was due to run in the Burden Stakes on uh, all weather finals day but he missed the race George, for a temperature I just hope that doesn't mean um, you know it's obviously a little bit of a setback but I think he'll be forward he loved the conditions and he will love going up to seven furlongs and you say about who doesn't love a horse of this profile who also doesn't love room service as well I never get to stay Absolutely. in quite that quality a hotel I don't feel Liverpool last week I definitely didn't stay in somewhere that, <laughs> that had uh, room service on offer but a 12 to 1 shot though sounds like Kate's on bigger wages than uh, us so I can't, definitely can't afford room service no. <laughs> no I know that's the whole reason why I was saying where I was in Liverpool Central <laughs> last weekend no room service on offer a vending machine at the entrance was as good as we got but room service then for deck and again we're all going rogue then we're all taking each other on but I'm being less rogue than the pair of you two because we're right at the head of the market zoom zoom for me rather than trying to find the alternative view watch my tracer might just be the each way alternative then for him but zoom zoom look at the size of this lad in comparison to the competition he faced last time out at Song Clue. Now the conditions were testing on this occasion and he dealt with them really well but I don't think testing conditions are paramount to his chances. Of course he's unbeaten in his three starts so far. This was listed company over seven furlongs and uh, he got this trip in really good style and also I think you can expect him to work up to being an even better three-year-old as well. And we talk about his form, you look back at his penultimate start which he won um, nicely and again that was over this trip because that form, the second one next time out, the third one next time out. So all of his form looks strong. He's proven at the trip. And at least for now, I'm expecting him to be the one to go on to bigger and better things. So zoom, zoom. Instead of just trying to take him on for the sake of it here, it's going to be the play for me. But watch my trace, and not just because of the name, for the each way play then potential alternative. Just to reiterate, Sam? I'm picturing Mr. Sketch winning. Oh, nice. Again, all these lines. Right, Deck, beat that. Um, Garçon, room service for me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to come up with anything for Zoom Zone <laughs> whatsoever because it's too obvious that I'm going to be able to. Right, we're going to switch codes now. We're going to move away from the flat, away from Newbury. We're going to head north up to air for the jumpers again. And we're going to begin with the Scottish champion oh, hurdle. Seven of... furlongs to four miles. <laughs> Love it. Well, not quite then for this one at least. Oh, sorry, We've only got the two miles then for this one. So we're bridging the gap somewhat yeah, at least for are. the two milers. Grade two contest, four-year-olds and over here. Low de sud heads away for the skeletons three to one favorite so deck do you want to take this one away yeah i'm going to keep this race pretty simple it's going to be at lloyd de sud for me um look he's had a light campaign he's only had three starts obviously the first start of the season didn't go well in the great wood he ran a cracker then in the the betfair hurdle um you know a big field strongly run race i just thought maybe he probably got to the front too soon this day um you know it just there was a strongly run race he sat closer to the pace than the the winner iberica lord he was also sent on two early for me and I think the positioning of the final hurdle this day at Newbury was actually further back than it usually is making the run in even longer but it was a brilliant brilliant run and Iberico Lord obviously things didn't pan out for him and the Nicky Henderson stable at Cheltenham but it, really interesting they supplemented him for the, the champion hurdle uh, then Lloyd de Sud did go on and run in the county hurdle another big um, two mile handicap race and he ran a cracker and he still yeah. looked like he was in great terms with himself now in terms of pace that race at Cheltenham set up completely different to this. This race at Newbury was a strongly run race. The race at Cheltenham was a really tactical run race. No pace on. I think the finishing speed percentage was like 112% or something. But I just love the way he travelled through the, the field. He started off held up worked his way into mid-div, then tracked the pace, uh, and he was just picked off by a, an Ebor winner and, uh, in Willie Mullins' absurd. Now, he's a, um, a flat horse, and I think the way the race was run really suited him. But I think, um, although he was beaten, the positive I would take from that, given it was such a slowly run race, it probably means he didn't have a hard race, mm. so he can go again. Like I said at the start, he's had a lightly, uh, lightly raced campaign. And the other thing I liked about him as well, last season he went to Kelso, 
and I, I presume he stayed overnight so that's another little um, little feather in his cap yeah. that he can travel up to Scotland stay overnight and still run his race this race will suit up better for him there's going to be more pace to run at here with the likes of Rabon going forward and the skeletons are still in the hunt for the trainers championship so I hope this old grey lovable horse can give them a big win yeah and Dex just said about it there Sam about the trainers title that we've got so we've got a Mullins and Nichols a skeleton horse and pretty much every race up at air then that we're covering and this is really Really going to go down to the wire by the looks of things but the skeleton's chucking everything at it with load of sud anyway yeah willie with entries at foss lass anything can happen in the next <laughs> seven days or so uh, this is a perfect sort of tee up for that isn't it but dex left me absolutely nothing to say about load of sud because i'm in complete agreement i actually forgot you'd absolute judge dex well. yeah i really fancy him uh the good news is as well i think ground actually i do think he needs that little bit easier ground they've got a bit of rain yeah. today at air mm. which i think will ensure that it's kept on that softer side um, i actually thought the rise the handicapper gave him for that second was was pretty fair i think it was only four pounds and in a field of this nature i'd say this looks a slightly easier race than the last two he's contested oh, absolutely you yeah, know agree. and and even with that right he's, he's been performing really well I don't think he's the sort of horse that's being thrown at this because it's a championship race. I do think it's a natural place to come. I think he's had enough time to get over the likes of that really big effort at Cheltenham. And I just went through the field and couldn't really find anything that I thought was kind of, of the profile I wanted to take him on with. Mm. Um, I thought Willie Mullins' runner looks a little bit of an aft. I, I think he needs proper spring summer ground, personally. Uh, last year's winner, I respect for Nichols, but I, I don't think I really fancy him here. I think this is a stronger renewal. So I came back rather boringly to the favourite, but I think he just wins. I know. I, I'm going to have to have a saver on him. He was my tip for the county, so I was slightly sick then as soon as Absurd just loomed up sides with that extra kick that he had. So I think that Load Sud has got away with the small rise then really for that fraud. It's going to sting a little bit, so I'm going to have to have a saver on both of your selections there because it will kill me to go and see him win this without carrying any of my money. I'm also going to have a little bit on First Street here as well. The back of the wind operation, he's coming here as a fresher horse than most as well mm. than for the Henderson Yard. But the each way alternative should one of these fail to fire in the conditions then it's going to be Salsada who's actually running from eight pound out of a handicap however Dylan Johnston's five pound claim offsets a large amount of that now we're going to look back this is 15 months ago so a bit of a tenuous form link that we're going with here but this is of course Epitont winning the grade two Yorkshire Rose mare's hurdle up at Doncaster now Salsada for all that she was in no league of Epitont's here whatsoever she's run a mighty race in second now she's been really really lightly raced since then and uh, of course she ran fifth in this race last year as well when finishing in front of the aforementioned first street now she's come back down the weights for all that she's only had the three starts since the scottish champion hurdle last year but last time out she was never really given a chance the way that the haydock race transpired to be able to get into it this race apart from last year tends to go to horses ridden that bit further back so hopefully then Salsada at a, a much bigger price, she's well in the bar, that uh, she might just be one to outrun her price from an each way perspective. So I hugely respect both of you of Load of Sud, but I'm also going to be siding with Salsada then each way. Again, do let us know your own selections in the comment section below for the Scottish champion hurdle. As we move on to the big one, up at air, the 335, the Scottish Grand National Handicap Chase. Premier Handicap, five year olds and over, over four miles. So of course, the Fiercely competitive betting heat yet again. Willie Mullins is McDermott, the six to one market leader. His other runner, the Mr. Incredible in here also. So Sam, who are we backing? Yeah, it's um it's meant to be the Willie Mullins show, but I think delightfully that means we're gonna get a good price about Gitmaker, mm. who for my money is the horse I really want to be with here. You go back to that run last time out at Cheltenham, he's been beaten by horses, then gone on and followed up at Aintree. We're going to check out some VT of him winning at Lingfield earlier on this season. This was against Super Survivor, his stablemate, who ended up going off favourite, I seem to recall, for the Welsh National. Now, he hasn't managed to frank that form because he didn't run the best of races there. But the way Jamie Snowden's brought this horse along, if you go back through his career, he sailed him out the first two whenever he runs. He's been campaigned quite nicely, quite conservatively. There's one sort of blot on his copybook where he was a bit disappointing, I thought, Ascot just before Christmas. But he's a really nice type. Mm. He's definitely going places. Think how far we'd be talking about. What price would he be? Now, I know it's easy to say. He wins the Kim Muir. Let's just say the winner wasn't in the race. He was a street mm. clear in that mm. race. Um, and he went off a massive price that day as well. So it's not like that was the only day that I think he'd had in mind. I really like his chances. I think he's a solid jumper, which is what you want. Of the rest, uh, Mr. Incredible, don't 
don't like horses turning out that quickly after unseating the National. <laughs> McDermott, if it rained a bit more, I'd probably be keener on him. Ambulance Crag, I definitely understand the angle there, having won the Ida Chase. Uh, of Mullins' runners, if Spanish Harlem was a bit more of a convincing jumper, I'd be keenest on him. But for me, I came down on Gitmaker. Of course he did, Dag, didn't he? The company man, as ever. Then I'll get in there before uh, do you. Know you. What? He, he's not wearing it now, but he had a Jamie Snowden racing very jacket. Very nice one on as well. Side. It was nice. And he, I said to him, are you wearing it? He said, no, I was very disappointed. I'll wear it next week when he wins. There exactly. If he goes and wins, right, there you go. Then Sam will be donning the gilet. There's a bit of me hoping he doesn't win because I backed him at Cheltenham, to be honest. And it's one of the few times I had a crack at a horse at a really big price yeah. that I didn't play without the favourite and he finished second. So, uh, yeah, sorry, Sam. I'm going to be a bit miserable if he wins. You're not with him though this time around. No, I'm not. I'm going to go. I'm going to get big grief for this, I think, now. But I think Stay Away Faye's got um, mm. a little squeak. Look, I know he's got top weight and he's running off a, off a, a massive mark as well. But look, he's got a couple of things in his favour. Uh, he's a prominent racer. I think that will suit him. Novices have a good record in the race. And he is a horse who's got a, a touch of class. But the other thing with this lad is you really can see an extreme kind of trip bringing out the best in him. You know, he's a horse who saves a load for himself. He races behind the bridle. Um, you just you never know when you get to the bottom of him. And I, I can just see him going really well despite the, the big weight. Uh, look, he's got to come here now off the back of, of a disappointing Ronald Shelton in the Brown Advisory Pot. Like, literally everything seemed to go wrong for him that day. Yeah. Uh, I think the ground was probably too soft for him. Um, he scoped wrong after the race. He was also reported to have lost his shoe. Harry Cobden said he never travelled either. And potentially he didn't face the first time cheek pieces. I think now, kind of going, um, having a dropping grade... Um, the cheap piece is removed, a bit of spring ground going up in trip I think could really suit him. Look, it's going to have to be a mega, mega performance, but he is a classy horse. Paul Nichols is a three-time winner of the Scottish Grand National. He's had all their horses beaten a short head in the race and the Nichols string are in good order. I think um, if he's ridden prominently like he usually is, I think he'll run well. I'm siding with another Nichols runner then. Best of luck to you all the same, though, <laughs> with your shorter price one, of which then stay away, Faye, at 12 to 1, because the other one then of the Nichols runners for me is a much bigger prize set bro with Broken Halo, who, again, it takes that little bit more of a case to be made for him. But again, as ever, I run the trends then on this race. Here we race. go. Drum roll, please. Mm -hmm. I know. Welcome to the new feature then. <laughs> this is going to be Tracy's Trends, the catchy name then of which as well. <laughs> Now, we've tried to focus in then on the last time out success of plenty of the horses going into the Scottish Grand National. Winner's previous run. So Kitty's Light, of course, won the Ida Chase. Win My Wings, also for the Christian Williams Yard, won the Ida Chase. Mighty Thunder was second in the Midlands National. Taking Risks was first in a Veterans Handicap Chase at Carlisle. And Joe Farrell, that was in a Novices Limited Handicap Chase that he finished first in at Newbury. So as you can see, finishing first last time out is a notable positive. Also, the fact that the last two winners of the race also won the Ida on their previous start. We have got the Ida winner in here in mm. Angler's Crag, who I wouldn't put anyone off mm. whatsoever. Also, then, the Midlands National form that we've got with Mighty Thunder. We've also got the Midlands National winner in Beauport in here. So, again, another horse that is ticking plenty of those positives. But when you start to go back through these horses, both Kitty's Light Wing My Wings won off of a marker 140. Win My Wings did have a £7 claimer on her back though but taking risks and joe farrell both one off of a mark of 135 funnily enough that's the perfect rating then for broken halo exactly what he's <laughs> running off of here and all five of these horses were ridden with restraint in this race airs very much a front runner bias track but in this particular contest being ridden with restraint is the way to go that's the way Broken Halo is ridden. Bryony Frost gets on board, though. We know Bryony's a very positive jockey. Mm -hmm. That's my slight concern, that she might ride him more forwards than he mm -hmm. tends to be ridden. If she rides him in his usual style, though, we know he'll save a trip. He won last time out, and he's rated 135. Bryony's Brian, a good form at the moment. Yeah. Flying yeah. form. Winners, yeah. But notably with front runners, though, yeah. which is <laughs> a real concern then for me. But as you can see, Tracy's trends, hopefully then, they will be ticking the boxes for Broken Halo at a big price but not to put you off of Angler's Crag or Beauport, which, again, are clearly ticking enough boxes themselves. So, lads, just to reiterate, Dexy's yeah, Tracy's Tracy's got the right stable with the wrong horse, so it's going to be stay away fair for me. Hopefully not, Sam. Get maker for me. <laughs> right, again, do let us know your own selections for the Scottish Grand National in the comments section below as we move over to the soft set to give you our best bets for the weekend.
Now it's best bet time. So we've moved back to the soft set now. And Sam, you're going to be up first. And of course, we've got more boosts on offer. Yeah, and just to say the dynamic boost. So if one of us picks a horse that drifts, and I can't believe we would, but you know, <laughs> it does happen. And the price drifts, you'll get a bigger price as well once you've looked online. So do check those. Right, here come my tips. Uh, 1.30, Arrest is going to be my nap of the weekend at Newbury. Really like this horse. This is his level, I think, where you can feel really confident. I think his record at this level is something like outside of grade two, uh, Group 2 companies, third, 1-1-1-1. One, 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 one. Uh, really good run last year in the St. Ledger to sign off with. Versatile on the ground. His record fresh is third, 1-1-1-1. One, one, one. There's a lot to like about his chances. This is his level. He's won at Newbury before. Uh, I thought the uh, 11 to 8 is really, really fair. Uh, Git Maker, we've already spoken about how good I think his chances in the Scottish National and around 15 to 2 are definitely be going in again. Um, he's a really likeable horse. Continually been on the upgrade. I thought the run last time out of Cheltenham was absolutely fantastic. The form's there for everyone to see. And then Mr. Sketch is going to be my long shot. I think it's just about justifiable as a long shot at 10 to 1. Uh, again, really hope to see that he's strengthened up. Hope that the uh, trip suits him. And uh, I think he could be in for a big season, even if he doesn't win on Saturday. I'd certainly have him in your trackers. Definitely. And a rest, so like I say, I think this is definitely his level, isn't it? Like I say, you said about that form That's... then for him below uh, group two level or yeah. group one level. Yeah. Yeah. So he is obviously going to be boosted as well then as your nap 11 to 8, now 13 to 8. That'll then do for, for me, a rest. Yeah. And hopefully, we're not entirely sure what the ground's going to be doing at Newbury, but uh, a rest should be able to cope I'll with tell it. You what, that, that is a good John Porter. I'm really looking mm. forward to that race, cracking race. Yeah. Hopefully, we still get the full lineup because we're just not entirely sure who's going to cope with conditions whatever they turn up like at Newbury but boosted 11 to 8 to 13 to 8 then a rest for Sam's nap right deck you're up right I am up um yeah I'm going to keep things pretty simple this week the the three horses that we've covered in the show are, are going to get a mention uh the nap is going to be Louis de Sud at air uh like I said at the time he hasn't had a busy season he comes here off uh, off a big run at Cheltenham but it was a slowly run race meaning that he's hopefully still in a good spot and as I said also uh uh, he's travelled up to Scotland before and run well. This looks like an easier race than the Betfair and the County Hurdle. So go on up the skeletons <laughs> for me, please. And then I'm going to go to the beloved flat for my next best. It's going to be Star Music. I think she's drastically overpriced. Um, she was a big two-year-old. I think she's going to train on. I hope that she gets an easy lead. She stays seven furlongs. Um, I just And Richard Hughes's team are in good order and they're forward. So that will do for me with the champion jockey Bill Buick doing the steering. <laughs> And then room service for the long shot this week in the Greenham. I just think he's another horse who's overpriced. Uh, seven furlongs, I think, will suit him down to the ground, as with a bit of... Uh as with a bit of juice in the ground. The Kevin Ryan team are in good order as well. And I think he's overpriced because Zoom Zoom takes up so much of the market in that race. Uh, I think that's a good race to have a bet in. Bit of juice for the room service then. But again, another bet boost that we've got for load of sud. And Sam will back you up then with this one, I'm sure as well. As will I, to save my blushes from the county hurdle <laughs> defeat. Three to one to 100 to 30 then for load of sud for Team Skelton and Team Deck then as well. Now, my own best bets. My nap is actually going in a race we haven't covered yet. Now, this is going to be Cade Bourbon for Paul Townend and Willie Mullins. Of course, going up to air, they've got a really strong hand as well. If I can just get even just that shade of odds on, I still think that'll be a decent price about him. The third last time out in the conditional jockeys race at the Cheltenham Festivals for Cade Bourbon was a really likeable one. Dealt with the hustle and bustle of his first start in a handicap in good style and hopefully he can give away the double penalty. My next best bet then is going to be Elm Lacker at 11 to 2 in the Fred Darling for all of the aforementioned reasons. That smart pedigree by Kingman out of Narain, the dual Group 1 winner, makes her a half-sister to the Group 1 winner, Ben Battle. She certainly looks as though she'll be staying the trip well. And Broken Halo at 40 to 1 then in the Scottish Grand National. We know he'll stay out the trip. We know that it's a positive, his rating of 135 and the fact that he was a winner last time out. And uh, for all that he, I was expecting him to go to Sandown then, which of course is his track. Hopefully he's going to be able to show his best form up at air with Bryony Frost booked to ride. But that is everything from us on this week's show. So a big thank you to Deck and Sam for all of their hard work as per usual. A big thank you to you at home for watching. Best of luck with your bets this weekend. And we'll be back at the same time next week to preview Sandown's jump season finale.